Today, we're gonna to talk about the highs and lows from quarter one. Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's episode. I am Chad Owen. As you can tell, a little bit harsh on the voice. I've been talking too much, which is usually a problem you have. Yeah, but my voice and never leaves when I do it. I know, it's always in my head, it's nonstop. It. It's like psychotic type of repetition in my head. Mm. And I wake up. Well, you know what? I remember when you started with us, so you had to listen to my courses over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. And you're probably like, oh my gosh, if I hear his voice again, I'm just going to hit myself in the head. The amount of times that I've been through, because we've, in the academy, Retirement Realized Agents Academy, we've outgrown the platform a couple of times. So we've mm -hmm. had training content from like three different platforms. Yep. The amount of times that I've been through those three individual mm -hmm. sets of training is absurd. I've heard Chad's voice for way yeah. too many minutes yeah. of my it's life. Pure wisdom his yeah. entire life. <laughs> But, but the beautiful thing is, you know, we did determine that he is Robin, Boy Wonder, because we well, finally settled it on Boy you, Wonder. You determined. But, well, because Robin, you know, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I have the money. I have the looks. I, have, <laughs> I can't, can't say that one without laughing. We're going off <laughs> so looks. You my wife be. thinks I have the looks. And uh, you clearly are the guy that wears the green leotard with the yellow underwear and the red shirt or whatever. I'd probably make your what, day if I did. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> so let's get on to the conversation right now. Highs and lows from Q1. By the way, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, highly recommend you make your way over to the YouTube channel yep. um, because it's, it's video and the team that edits, they add in some funny things, I think. Sure. That makes it uh, a little bit we'll more entertaining. With that. Yes. <laughs> um, entertaining, yes. Funny. Hmm. Yeah, matter of it depends opinion. on here. <laughs> it depends who's being made fun of at the time. Uh, yeah, if, if it's Jad getting made fun of, it's usually pretty good. If it's me, hmm. people start, you know, mourning and sympathizing and all the things. Okay, so do your job. You are having a record year. Yes. Right. So Very we talked about so. highs and lows from Q1. High being you're mm -hmm. having a record year, which is amazing. Yep. Uh, best best quarter one you've ever had. You're yep. over 11 million. Uh, just in quarter one was like 11 point, what, 11.23 or yeah, something? I think I passed 12. Uh, did you? <laughs> uh, whatever it was, it was a yeah. record quarter one. Because these, these are pre-recorded a little bit. So they give are me a little bit of little time. Bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I actually think I might pass 13. Really? We'll see. We'll see. You'll know by the time yeah. this podcast, <laughs> you'll know if I did that. Because at the time of this podcast recording, it's not quite the end of Q1. Yeah, not quite. But it is a high from the standpoint of it is still a record quarter one yes. for you. Uh, and what's interesting is a lot of repeat clients, a lot of yeah. a lot of clients that were previous clients that now the market's kind of starting to flutter yeah. and fall and all the things, they kind of resurface and they're ready yeah, to do more business. I mean, all the big deals, I've, I think pretty much all the big deals have all been new clients. So, but yeah, yeah there's a lot of little ones coming out of the woodworks, 100,000 here, 200,000 there, 50,000 there. You know, I, I count everything, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it all adds up. Yeah. That just goes where it's so important to have that drip system. You know, we, for our agents in Retirement Realized Financial, we have an actual drip system that they can get on. Actually, it's mm -hmm. in the academy as well. Yeah, Marketing Elite. Yeah, so uh, you can get the drip system where all of your clients you've had, whether you wrote business or not, you have their email. Mm -hmm. We just continue to drip on them. And I have clients I've had from five years ago. Yeah. You know, that six or seven, actually one that I'm working on right now is 2006, I think. Okay. 2000, yeah, that I had the email from. And, you know, people say, well, I don't have enough email addresses. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. Right. You, you start know? somewhere. Start I mean, building. if I never would have started seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, actually longer than that. I think I really started to be deliberate in email addresses around 2010, mm -hmm. I would imagine. So once I got to that stage, I mean, it's just been a constant building map. I'm, right. I, I think I'm a little over almost 5,200 uh, email now. And that's pretty amazing because you do have a lot of people that unsubscribe. Yeah. So clients, I mean, potential clients, I mean, it's got to be over 10,000 at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably way more than that. But, you know, because I, I still, even if I have something and it's an institution, right. I usually unsubscribe. 
Yeah. So we try and be very, very deliberate in what we're putting in for content. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the idea behind it being if it's existing clients, Chad, mm -hmm. they're being reinforced, right? Like the purchase decision that they've already made yep. is being reinforced. They're not going to have buyer's remorse. Yeah. Hopefully if they get into that, yeah. and they read that content. But it's also the people I couldn't get in touch with. Exactly. The people it's I did full. get in touch with and it just, they weren't ready for it. So you got to start somewhere. That's really important. I, I mean, often people are like, wow, it's amazing how much business you do. God, it's been a lot of hard work. Yeah. I mean, even now, right. I'm, I have years to build an overnight taken time success. off for a while. And it's just, cause I'm, I know this is the time, right? I, I used this example with an agent this morning. I said, when the fish is, when the, the net is full of fish, that's not the time to stop and take a break, mm -hmm. you know? And right now the net's full of fish. Yeah. People that are ready to protect their money. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And I love the fact that like you say, a lot of the big deals, they're obviously fresh, you know, fresh clients from mm -hmm. new for this year. Yeah. Um, but there's been a, you know, a fair amount of business written from existing clients yeah. and, and a lot of that coming just from you doing a good job in the follow up yeah. process after the mm -hmm. deal, right? You yep. get your annual statements, you get your reallocation opportunities, mm -hmm. you do a little mini fact finder yep. with them, find out, okay, they've got this much more money. They want to protect it. Sure. Something's new out there that they need or, you know, want or whatever. And now all of a sudden you've got a new deal and you've already got existing relationship uh, they understand your expertise and so there's a whole lot of that process that you spend building up expertise and communicating and teaching that they've already got they've mm -hmm. already been through it so they know yep do yeah. you know how hard it is to actually pay attention when you're talking how hard is it i just totally spaced out and i'm like i'm hearing you talk but i'm not listening to the words <laughs> so, yeah, that's all right but no it did make sense totally yeah, such words sense. of wisdom yeah. right here real smart no leave it to Robin. i do know what you said <laughs> um another good thing i mean we're talking about highs and lows the market's been down which is the market is low it is a high for us it is right so well it, i wouldn't say so much a high or low i'd say volatility sure because with the volatility of the market it creates uncertainty. And, you know, even with the bouncing back a little here and then going down again and bouncing back again, it just shows so much uncertainty. I mean, we talk politically, economically, um, even health wise, there's so many things out there. I mean, come on, you know, a little while ago, even people are getting slapped at the Emmys, you know, I mean, it's like, I mean, what's the world coming to? I don't know what's going on. When, when the, when the elites can't even get along and they start slapping each other on stage. I mean, come on. Weird <laughs> stuff, man. It is weird stuff. It's, yeah. I was at the pool yesterday and uh, there's a friend's apartment pool and there was a mishap going on, a, a scuffle, so to speak. And one dude got a skateboard to the back of the head and the kid whacked him with the skateboard. See? Did that hurt? Like, gosh. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, it would have. You got to be quicker hurt. than that. Although my head might have broken that skateboard say, as hard headed as I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so markets down, increasing opportunity there with people that are are noticing a greater need for safety and security. For sure. Um, you've had a couple of really uh, neat. I say neat. Uh, I, I guess they would say impactful cases in Q1. One was a widow um, that was just you know, blessed you. And, and I want to share these stories, not that these stories have any real like walk away, uh, tangible, you know, sales benefit or whatever to the listeners, but they as do encouragement, you realize what you're there to do and yeah. serve your clients. That's the thing. I mean, encouraging absolutely. these guys that this is, this is what we get to do. And yep. so you had a widow client. Can you tell us the story on that one. Bruce? Yeah. Basically her husband passed away. He was 60 years old, just kind of, you know, a random thing. And I went out there, I pulled up, you know, it's in the country and she's sitting leaning right against the UTV and she just looks right at me and she just starts crying and she's like, I really yeah. don't want to do this. And I'm like, I know, neither do I. Right. But I said, we need to make sure we can get through this to get everything transferred over to your name. And it was just a time spending and I gave her a little side hug there and then I went to go away and then she just gave me this big hug before I left. And I was like, man, this is, this is what it's about being there to give in, in a major traumatic, horrible circumstance, being able to at least provide somewhat of comfort. Mm -hmm. It was a really good thing. You provided, you provided more than just safety and security. Yeah, absolutely. In, in that particular Empathy, instance. sympathy, you, you name it. I felt it. I mean, it was, I can't even imagine. Yeah. I mean, it just, you expect someone to live a lot longer than that. And, uh, man, I, I just met with them the first time in August of last year. Yeah. And then he's dead. So it's, 
it's a tough, it's also a tough business because this, this business will really uh, give you a cross check on your mortality. You know, you realize you see death too yeah, much. You see death a lot. And you also see the great benefit of that from the standpoint of the surviving spouse doesn't have to worry about, Oh my gosh, sure. half the money's gone. I, you know, like pensions, a lot of these pensions, you have a 25, 30, 50% survivorship, some zero with an income annuity with a joint payout. You don't have to worry about that. So yeah. there's, there is a lot of comfort in that, but there's, there's no way you can not feel sure. in that circumstance. Right. You know, but you, handy. you've got to keep it together too, though, because she had some situations. I'm like, okay, you know what? We're trying to get a death claim taken care of with a company that I had nothing to do with and th nothing's wrong. You know, it's not like it's out of line or everything. There's still wealth at the time, but I'm just saying, if you ever need help on that, you know, I'll be happy to help you. And it's yeah. not an amount that I'm looking to put in an annuity. We're already fine with that. It's just, I want to help her. Make sure she's uh, taken care of. Yep. Yeah. That's really good. You had another, another case where it was a couple that they lived very, very frugally mm -hmm. and managed to you know, accumulate something over two, two million, four million yeah. dollars, and they never thought they had more than two or three hundred thousand. They're like, I mean, they knew she knew she had a four hundred one k, but she didn't realize what it could actually do for. Her. And I went back to deliver the policy, and she started getting all teary eyed and cried a little bit. And she goes, "I'm just so happy to know I don't have to worry about my money anymore." Yeah, and I was just like, "It's so great to be in this business. I yeah. love it. I mean." You think about this, you know, I was in the jewelry business for years and the only time people buy jewelry is for a happy occasion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know of any, you know, well, I don't know. There's a couple ladies that bought a divorce ring, you know, sure. they're like, Hey, I just got a settlement from my ex-husband. I'm buying a ring, but most of the time it's all happy. Right. And you know, this business, even though you may have the challenging circumstances and this quarter, I mean, that wasn't the only one. I had another guy in the same week I had to deal with the death claim. Yeah. He lost his wife and she was only 62 years old. And I met them last year. And I'm telling you, you never would have known a right. year later she would be gone. It was so heartbreaking. But Golly. I mean, the entire time I'm talking to him, you could tell he's just one, one second away from losing her. And yeah, that's tough. Uh, but you know what? That's what our industry is about. I mean, when we deal with this age group, yeah, we're going to have people that are going to live a long time and we're going to have people that pass away prematurely. That's true. And it's, it's can be very tough. That was one of my notes I made for this particular episode was that this is prime time mm -hmm. for annuities. It is. Um, I mean, when you look at the options that are out there, volatility in the market, oh, I'm telling you interest rates going mm -hmm. up in annuities. I mean, we have a, a fixed, one year point to point at 2.75% for, yeah, for strategy. a fixed account. Yeah. And, you know, granted we have other indices in that particular annuity, but 2.75 for a fixed one year rate. I'm well, just that, like, this is incredible. That one, that, okay. I know what you're referring to. So you've got a fixed and if account. If you want to know what that one is, yeah, reach, reach out, out to, to Caleb because we're one of the few ones that actually have that. It's true. You get a 2.75% fixed rate for, for year one. And you've got at least two annual point-to-point -point index strategies that I know of averaging over six and a half. One is over seven for the last 10 years. Now, it's very important to understand we're using worst case scenario in the last 10 years. So it goes, most of these go back 25, 30 years. You use 10 year increments. We're talking about the worst it's performed, not Correct. the best, because I will not use the best out of indices. I'll use the worst performance. And, you know, who knows what it's going to do the next 10 years. But I do know for a fact we have a good income part of it that is stacked on top totally. of the index. And as long as they keep that, I mean, I've already told them. I've written a ton of business with them and other insurance companies as well. But I told them, I said, if you change that income guarantee, you will no longer be the far better, far superior product. Right. You know, because there's other ones out there that if it we're just talking straight index, it's pretty darn close. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean... Every quarter this year is, and this is also w with a weird thing, is the longest I've ever went without taking a week off. Yeah, in a long true. Time. In a, in a, over I a mean, year and a half. Oh, yeah, easy. I, I think I d went through a stage of 2020 where I had like three months where I didn't go mm -hmm. anywhere, but I still took time off. Right. I'd be curious to see what my calendar says because I would probably go back 
five or six, seven years ago where I've had this long. But once again, when the net's full of fish, you know, that's it's why I'm sitting here break. drinking tea while we're talking because my voice is literally, oh, plus you had Texas allergies on top of it. So you know. it's a recipe. <clears throat> yes, it is. Well, and that is another another high point from Q1 is, is we did see a very substantial and widespread rate increases, um, higher par rates, higher caps, lower spreads, kind of across the board on those index strategies, yeah, which is that always good. Ten-year treasury go up. That's a big thing that yeah. helps us a lot. Yeah, and and I still expect that to continue to go up. And CD rates, uh, I mean, a five-year CD is still a lot less than the one-year annual point-to-point. -point. It's just we're we're in a really good time as yeah. far as our opportunity absolutely. absolutely well and that's why when we talk about highs and lows it really other than you know some sad scenarios yeah. in q1 there's not really many lows to speak of it's no, it's been it's a been really phenomenal. good time we are in prime time other a lot than of being tired yeah other than being tired <laughs> a lot of uh client opportunities with existing clients as well as new clients so get ready for for hopefully a big q2 absolutely yeah. well i hope this helps you guys we'll wrap it up and happy selling